Gustav Philip Kerner, also spelled Gustav or Gustavus Kerner, November 20, 1809 to April 9, 1896, was a revolutionary, journalist, lawyer, politician, judge, and statesman in Illinois and Germany and a colonel of the U.S. Army who was a confessed enemy of slavery. He married on June 17, 1836 in Belleville Sophia Dorothea Engelman, November 16, 1815 to March 1, 1888. They had nine children. He belonged to the co-founders and was one of the first members of the Grand Old Party, and he was a close confidant of Abraham Lincoln and his wife Mary Todd and had an essential role in his nomination and election for president in 1860. Gustav was the son of the Frankfurt publisher, bookseller, and art dealer Bernhard Corner, 1776-1829, and his wife Maria Magdalena Kampfe, 1776-1847, daughter of another Frankfurt bookseller. He graduated with Abitur from the Gymnasium Franco Ferdinand. Then he studied law at the universities in Jena, Munich, and Heidelberg and graduated 1832 from the University of Heidelberg as Dr. Juris Utriusk, doctor as well as German and Roman law. On Christmas Eve 1830 in Munich, Kerner was involved in a somewhat drunken snowball fight that led to a confrontation with the gendarmerie of that city in Royal Bavaria where an officer was knocked down and wounded. Because of his participation in these so-called Christmas riots, he was taken into custody for four months, later recalling that during the time of his captivity he learned more about the law than during the whole of his two years' study at the University of Jena. Owing to this event the University of Munich was temporarily closed and after his custody, Kerner changed to the university in Heidelberg. Kerner was one of the participants at the Hambach Festival in spring of 1832 which was held to prepare a free, democratic, and unified state in Germany. The German Confederation's Legation of Sovereigns, the Bundestag, officially called the Bundesversammlung, Federal Assembly, was located in the Palafernu and the taxis in the center of Frankfurt, Kerner's native city. During the Frankfurt or Watchensturm in 1833, a failed attempt by students to start a revolution in all states of the German Confederation, Kerner was injured and, to avoid being prosecuted by the authorities and held captive for high treason which would threaten capital punishment, he escaped in female dress to France. A warrant was out for him. He is counted as one of the Dreisiger. The Central Federal Bureau for Investigations, German, Bund's Central Behord für Untersuchungen, in Frankfurt was set up after the revolt against the reign of the President of the German Confederation, Francisite, Emperor of Austria, his Chancellor Prince Metternich and his other vassals including King Frederick William III of Prussia. These authorities assigned him number 908 with the name Gustav Peter Philip Kerner in their infamous Black Book of Revolutionary Suspects. The free city of Frankfurt was occupied by federal troops from Austria and Prussia which meant a de facto total loss of its independence. On May 1, 1833, Kerner boarded a ship in Le Havre sailing to North America with a group of emigrants headed by the patriarch of the Engelmann family, whose son Theodore was an old friend of his from college. On the passage he became engaged to his future wife Sophie, a daughter of Engelmann's who was born in the electorate of the Palatinate, German, Kirpfalls a historic region of Germany. A year earlier, as a vanguard for the family, her cousin George Engelmann had explored the region of the Midwestern United States. George was also from Frankfurt, about the same age as Gustav, and had attended the same school, receiving a degree as MD and later becoming a famous expert in the botany of North America. They reached the port of New York City on June 17 and went next to St. Louis in Missouri, a slave state that Kerner deeply abhorred. Shortly after, Having departed that city, he and the Engelmans settled down in the Shiloh Valley near Belleville, Illinois. Demonstrating the sincerity and earnestness of Kerner's attitude toward the abolition of slavery, the 50th anniversary edition of the Belleville Zeit imprinted this example from those memorable days of the anti-slavery movement. A large crowd was gathered in great excitement in Belleville's public square. Kerner, inquiring for the cause of this unusual gathering and learning that a slave was being offered for sale, rose from his horse, went to the auction stand, bought the slave and immediately gave him freedom. Kerner continued his legal studies in American law at Transylvania University in Lexington, Kentucky during 1834 to 1835. While at the university, he got to know a Mary Todd who a few years later married Abraham Lincoln. From 1835 he practiced in Belleville as a lawyer in his own firm, then practiced in the office of Adam W. Snyder in Belleville and from 1837 worked in the office of James Shields. In 1838 he received American citizenship. Kerner was elected to the Illinois House of Representatives in 1842, 
served on the Illinois Supreme Court from 1845 to 1848, and as the 12th Lieutenant Governor of Illinois from 1853 to 1857. Originally a Democrat, he became a member of the Republican Party after its formation and helped develop its anti-slavery platform. As a friend, he took over some of Abraham Lincoln's cases when Lincoln was elected president. Kerner was the first citizen of German extraction ever elected to the Illinois or Missouri legislatures. In 1851, in a clash with the editor of Anzeiger der Westens Henry Bornstein, he called the 48 screens in his Belleville Zeitung newspaper and Bornstein, in a published reply, insultingly called him Great Gustav. In 1861, Kerner was instrumental in raising the 43rd Illinois Volunteer Infantry Regiment but before its organization had been completed, he was appointed Colonel of Volunteers and assigned as aide to General John C. Fremont, upon whose removal he was assigned to General Henry W. Halleck's staff as Brigadier General. He resigned in April 1862 due to impaired health. Shortly thereafter, he succeeded Carl Schurz as United States Ambassador to Spain. The expectation was that Kerner would prevent Spain from entering into the American Civil War on the side of the southern slave states. Although Kerner, the envoy extraordinary and minister plenipotentiary of the United States of America, his precise titles as ambassador, managed to accomplish this objective, he was discontented in Spain and asked the president several times for a replacement. An important reason prompting his request was that the stipend for his ambassadorship did not nearly cover the huge financial obligations expected of him at the Spanish court. Kerner had to provide such funds from his private accounts. In 1864, he left the diplomatic service and returned to the United States. After the assassination of Abraham Lincoln a special honor was granted him. Kerner was one of the pallbearers who carried the corpse of the president in the state funeral. The other men, all of them Lincoln's friends from his time in Springfield, Illinois, who conducted the coffin were Jesse K. Du Bois, Stephen T. Logan, James L. M. Samuel Hubbletreat, Jr. John Williams. Erastus White. J. M. Brown. Jacob Munn. Charles Matheny. Alicia Isles. John T. Stewart. In 1867 Kerner was appointed president of the board of trustees that organized the Illinois Soldiers' Orphans' Home at Bloomington, and in 1870 he became president of the first board of railroad commissioners of Illinois. A supporter of Ulysses S. Grant's successful 1868 presidential election bid, in 1872 he became a supporter of the Liberal Republican Party, belonging to the nominating committee which chose Horace Greeley as its, unsuccessful, U.S. presidential candidate. In the same year Kerner ran for election, Illinois gubernatorial election, 1872, to the office of governor of Illinois, though the Republican Richard James Oglesby, 1824-1899, won the election. He then backed the Democratic candidate Samuel J. Tilden for the U.S. presidency in a contentious election of 1876. Tilden won the absolute majority and was not elected due to a political deal between the two dominant parties, and remained with this party afterwards. In 1874, Kerner's wife Sophia, together with Henry Robb, 1837 to 1901, a German immigrant, 1854, from Wetzlar, a librarian in Belleville and later a well known educator, established, with others, one of the first kindergartens. She became the first president of the Belleville Kindergarten Association which received $2,100 in contributions from 70 shareholders and, supported by 150 other women, one year later was serving 201 pupils taught by three educators. This institute followed the Julius Rubble system of primary education for training children effortlessly. The building was finished in April 1875 for $5,000 but it was sold in 1892 to the Belleville Philharmonic Society. At the suggestion of farmer Dr. Anton Schott, a graduate in theology and philosophy, Kerner, together with other Latin farmers, in 1836 founded the public library in Belleville, probably the first in Illinois. Although he had never pursued agriculture as a profession, he is counted among the group of Latin farmers which was a half-satirical, half-respectful designation for people like him, German immigrants in the United States who had received an advanced academic education. Kerner was an active lawyer and also wrote articles for several newspapers, among others the Belvillar Zeitung and the Danziger de Westens, published in St. Louis, American newspapers in the German language. He had great influence on the growing German community in North America in the second half of the 19th century,
on the recommendation of his friend and biographer Heinrich Raderman, 1832-1923, he began at the end of 1886 to record his memoirs. Kerner did not consider publication. He wrote down the detailed retrospective of his life as a recollection for his numerous descendants. His memoirs were published in two volumes in 1909, 13 years after his death and in the year of his 100th birthday, in Cedar Rapids, Iowa. Today Kerner's former home is registered in the National Register of Historic Places. It was acquired in 2001 by the city of Belleville and is being restored by the Historical Society of St. Clair County, Illinois, St. Clair County Historical Society, as a museum dedicated to the well-known German-American. It will illuminate Kerner's friendship with Abraham Lincoln. In 2009, Belleville celebrated Kerner's 200th birthday with a festive dinner attended by Kerner and Engelmann descendants. The following day, they planted an American white oak tree, the State Tree of Illinois, at Kerner's Walnut Hill grave and presented a valuable exhibit for the planned Kerner Museum, a heavy silver tablet, given by Queen Isabella II of Spain in 1864 to Gustav Kerner for his farewell as a U.S. ambassador to Spain. The Historical Society of St. Clair County, Illinois, in which Belleville is located, will restore the former home of Gustav Kerner to a museum under the motto Do Right and Fear No One which in 2009 was also the motto of his 200th birthday celebration. Hack properly and fear no one was, however, not quite his personal motto. Rather, in his memoirs he described this phrase as the religion of most Burschenschafter, student fraternities, during his student years at Jena, though he still may have made it his own basic position as an active Burschenschafter. Our society was open to both Jew and Gentile, and I really should not have been able to tell the religion of most of my friends. Do right and fear no one, seems to have been the only religion adopted amongst us. One of his personal leitmotifs was pointed out by the Belvular Zeitung, the local German language newspaper, on January 11, 1899, nearly three years after his death, in a biography in the Jubilee edition at the 50th anniversary of their first appearance. The whole work of his long life full of fame may be added up as a continual statement of his favorite motto, namely, no rights without duties, no duties without rights. Belleville Zeitung. Kerner, Gustav, 1909. McCormick, Thomas J. Dead. Memoirs of Gustav Kerner, 1809-1896, Life Sketches Written at the Suggestion of His Children, Book. Digitization Projects Philologic Results. Volume 1, Permission, Northern Illinois University, Illinois State Library ed. Cedar Rapids, Iowa, The Torch Press. Retrieved August 25, 2013. Kerner, Gustav, 1909. McCormick, Thomas J. Dead. Memoirs of Gustav Kerner, 1809-1896, Life Sketches Written at the Suggestion of His Children, Book, JavaScript. The Institute of Museum and Library Services through an Indiana State Library LSTA grant. Volume 2, Lincoln Financial Foundation Collection ad. Cedar Rapids, Iowa. The Torch Press. Retrieved August 25, 2013. Collections of the Important General Laws of Illinois, with comments, St. Louis, 1838, in German. Corner, Gustav, 1867. A U.S. Spaniard out of Spain, in German. Frankfurt A.M., J.D. Sauerlander. OCLC 01416439. Corner, Gustav Philip, 1880. Dodds Deutsche Element in den Vereinigten Staaten von Nordamerika, 1818-1848 The German Element in the United States of America, 1818-1848 Library of American Civilization, LAC 15737, in German and English Cincinnati, A.E. Wild OCLC 01135594